2023 is upon us. Um, trusting in, in creator's goodness as usual. Uh, you know, some days that's all we have to hold on to. Um, so welcome. Hope you're doing well. I hope you had a good, it's been about a month since we've seen you. So I hope you had a good month, um, good opportunity to spend time listening to teachings. Like winter is that season where we're, we just slow down. We let our bodies, we let our minds, we let our spirits, we let our heart, you know, have a moment of rest and quiet and restoration. And it's a good opportunity just to listen to the stories of the ones who've walked before us, the elders, the knowledge keepers, and just take in the wisdom all of those stories bring to us. So I hope you've had a good season so far. Um, today, we got two guest speakers joining us. We got Mary and Dana. We're honored that you've pressed pause on your your work day to come here and and let us know what's what you're up to what you're doing uh, so they are joining us today from the clean growth hub so welcome welcome um so there will be opportunity I think it's always important to create space for any questions or comments or even, you know, an experience that you've had. So there'll be opportunity at the end of today's conversation for you to chime in. But throughout, if say if you have a question or a thought, use that chat box. It is there for you to utilize. And we will be sure to bring that in, uh, remember it, and uh, make sure that your question gets heard. So we welcome you all to WOW. Everybody is welcome here. This is a space. This is an opportunity for us just to learn, to grow, and to build our capacity. So we welcome you. We look forward to today's session. So a little bit about our guest speaker. So Mary, she is a senior officer at the Clean Growth Hub, which is the Government of Canada's one-stop shop for information on funding and services to help clean technology innovators and adopters navigate federal programs. So she's, or she represents innovation, science, and economic development Canada, which along with the Natural Resources Canada, it's one of She's one of the co-chairs for the Clean Growth Hub. She is part of inter interdepartmental team made up of representatives from 17 federal organizations helping clean tech innovators and adopters connect with appropriate financial and non-financial federal support such as expertise on regulations, standards, government procurements, skills, training, domestic and international markets, intellectual property and more. Woo, I feel like we're, we're going to be given some good knowledge today. So she also has her colleague here, Dana. She's been with, with this group for over a year. So she's here to support. So we welcome you both to can do links to learning the first one of 2023. That's so special. So we're glad you're here. We're glad all of you have joined us this afternoon. Uh, so welcome, welcome. I'm just going to pass this virtual mic off to you. Sure. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, thank you for inviting us here and uh, for everybody um, participating and joining us today. Um, just echoing everything that Michelle has said so far. My name is Mary Conpet. Senior Officer at the Clean Growth Hub, representing Innovation, Science and Economic Development Canada, or you may also know us as ICED. Uh, I am accompanied by my colleague, Dana Lefebvre, who will be able to answer any questions that you pose in chat, or please feel free to raise your hand to ask a question anytime during the presentation as well. Uh, today, we will share information about the Clean Growth Hub and our services in helping clean tech developers and adopters navigate through the federal opportunities. Now, we'll begin by providing an overview of the hub and how we help clean tech developers and adopters access federal supports, the relationship that the hub has with federal partners, uh, the, the work we do behind the scenes, how to obtain the services of the hub and how to help your clients benefit from these services. 
And throughout this presentation, in case there may be some confusion, uh, we'll be referring to the Clean Growth Hub as the hub, just for sure, for shortening the name. <laughs> Uh, now, first and foremost, what are clean technologies? Uh, clean technologies are defined by Statistics Canada as any good or service designed with the primary purpose of contributing or remediating or preventing any type of environmental damage. Uh, it can also be any good or service that is less polluting or more resource efficient than equivalent normal products that provide a similar utility. The hub was announced in budget 2017 and was launched in January 2018 and renewed for three years through budget 2021 as the federal focal point for these clean technologies. Um, our mandate is to help clean tech innovators and adopters navigate federal programs, enhance program coordination, and track the outcomes of federal investments in clean tech. We do this by uh, supporting clean tech companies and projects by providing information and advice about federal financial and non-financial supports available, um, enhancing program coordination among federal departments and agencies to optimize federal support for clean tech projects, um, track clean tech program and project outcomes through contributing to the implementation of the clean technology data strategy as well. We have an inter interdepartmental team made up of representatives from 17 federal departments and agencies, as Michelle uh, noted earlier. And since launch, we've served over uh, 2,500 clients. Now, recognizing that client service is a core function of the hub, we have set a high service standard for our team of client service officers and are continuously working to improve client satisfaction. The hub is unique in government because it is led by two departments, Natural Resources Canada or NRCAN, and of course, I said, um, as mentioned previously, it is made up of the 17 federal departments and agencies that support clean tech development and deployment. This slide provides a snapshot of our current hub partners. We are constantly expanding on federal partnerships with the most recent addition being Employment and Social Development Canada. Um, I believe they joined us last February or March, early March. Each department and agency has a designated hub representative providing access to knowledge of programs, policies, and networks within the organization they represent. In engaging with clean tech clients, this basically allows us to more effectively assist organizations navigate through the federal clean tech ecosystem. Now, before we go into the services we provide, I wanted to mention a couple of other functions of the hub. Um, firstly, we is how we support program and policy colleagues. We supply intel on, on insights about clients. We facilitate interdepartmental discussions on emerging clean tech topics. Uh, we coordinate intergovernmental information sharing uh, projects and programs, um, all with the goal of really connecting the dots and creating efficiencies within the federal clean tech support ecosystem. Uh, we also have MOUs uh, with some provinces that allows us to uh, forge relationships on the provincial level, which in turn enhances and grows the clean tech network that clients can access when they come to the hub. The hub has entered into five information sharing agreements with British Columbia, Alberta, Nova Scotia, and different regional development ag agencies such as um, Western Canada and the Atlantic. Uh, another aspect of the hub is our role in coordinating um, the administrative component of the clean tech data strategy. Uh, through this strategy, we work to standardize and compare and analyze clean tech data obtained from federal programs across multiple departments. Ultimately, the data is to show the results of federal clean tech investments in the Canadian clean tech ecosystem. Uh, this helps us better understand who we fund and how we support the growth of clean tech in Canada. You can find a link to the clean tech data strategy on our website and it includes uh, interactive dashboards on different aspects of clean tech in Canada. Now, the hub is a central source 
for information on clean tech programs. And we support clients through multiple channels. Uh, for example, uh, our website provides online resources to help clean tech innovators and adopters find and access federal funding and other government support. We also maintain a list of clean tech specific federal funding um, on our website, which saves companies time from, from uh, searching through multiple program websites. We also try to post information about industry programs supported financially by the federal government. The website also features resources and tools such as a toolkit on applying for federal grant and contribution funding programs and our technology readiness level or TRL assessment tool. Um, our website is also updated on a weekly basis to highlight Government of Canada news releases, publications, call for proposals, both for funding and for procurement, um, call for expressions of interests, public consultations, um, event announcements, and successes experienced by our clients. Um, other content also includes announcements and updates from our federal partners as well. Um, and in addition to our website, we issue a newsletter quarterly uh, to keep subscribers up to date on clean tech programs, uh, open calls, and news in the federal context. The next newsletter will be published in March. Um, so if you haven't done so already, we recommend signing up for our newsletter as it gives timely information on opportunities that may be of interest. Um, and finally, uh, we offer tailored advice to clean tech innovators and adopters looking for clean tech support. And I'll provide more details on that in the next few slides. So we help clean tech clients advance solutions across many clean tech subsectors from research development and demonstration stage to market adoption. Um, our clients range from early adopters to large, uh, sorry, early innovators to large adopters. Uh, most organizations who contact us are small, medium enterprises or SMEs, but our offering is not limited to just companies. Um, we also support municipalities, uh, community organizations, not-for-profits and for-profit associations as well. As long as they are players within the clean tech ecosystem, we can potentially help. Now in helping our clients, we tailor our advice to the supports and services that the clean tech innovators and adopters are looking for. And we'll provide information on relevant funding opportunities, funding programs and services that, may, that they may be eligible for as well. We can also connect them to federal experts who can provide support on a variety of topics such as regulations, standards, procurement, IP, and more. Uh, one thing we can't do, however, is provide funding to our clients. We don't have a budget uh, to finance projects. However, we are committed to ensuring that our officers are knowledgeable of the multitude of funding programs out there in order to help find the right fit for a project. Now, the most common reasons clients contact the hub include looking for information on government programs, seeking support for export activities, questions about regulatory policy, procurement, or IP, and requesting help accessing federal labs or other government innovation expertise. And that's just to name a few reasons. Now, how it works, um, accessing the hub's advisory services, um, we can best help clean tech innovators and adopters find resources when their project is program ready. Um, our toolkit for applying for government funding will help clients identify if they are program ready. To break it down here though, what program ready means is that the organization has a specific project with a defined timeline that will result in the creation of a unique product or service offering, has established an estimated project cost, uh, has completed a feasibility or other study to fill a knowledge gap, has a, a solid business plan that, um, that uh, outlines their project. Um, and if the project revolves around um, research and development um, or commercialization of a technology, the IP of the technology should be owned by the company and is at TRL three or higher. And that's if the, the company is the innovator. Um, again, we still, um, uh, provide assistance to adopters as well. And as mentioned earlier, our website has the TRL assessment tool. 
um, that can help determine the TRL level. Uh, essentially, TRL3 means that the technology is past the idea stage. Um, at this point, clients may need help to identify federal funding opportunities to fill a partial funding gap for their project. Now, clean tech developers and adopters seeking to connect with the Clean Growth Hub will need to fill out our online service request form to help us understand their project needs. Uh, the online service request form asks questions such as organization's clean tech goals, brief description of the project and its defined environmental and economical benefits, and from information on the technology if the project includes one, and the total project cost and amount of funding needed. The service request form will allow us to do some research um, on available opportunities so that we could best tailor our advice and our guidance. We receive the form through our corporate inbox and always respond within five business days. We will then set up a meeting with organizations with program ready projects. And during that session, organizations will have access to two program officers to discuss some preliminary opportunities. Um, based on information gathered during the meeting, the officers will follow up with a list of further recommendations, both to help achieve clients' immediate goals and their business goals in the future. Um, organizations who come to the hub will always remain clients of the hub. Clients can continue to come back for assistance, even if it is to, even if it is related to a different project. Uh, additionally, officers will keep their eyes open and their ears to the ground for news and opportunities that may fit the organization's needs, and will let them know when those opportunities pop up. Once an organization becomes a client of the hub they do not need to resubmit a service request form um, if they wish to reconnect down the line. Basically, once a client, always a client. Now, as previously noted, one of the biggest reasons why clients come to us is to look for assistance in identifying programs. The vast majority of organizations are seeking funding to support their clean tech projects. In budget 2021, the federal government committed $17.6 billion towards Canada's green recovery. Funding available through this commitment can be accessed through a number of different programs and financial structures, including through capital such as equity and venture capital. Uh, we are able to connect you with our partners, BDC and EDC, who can help pursue these types of financial opportunities. BDC and EDC are both part of the 17 uh, different um, agencies that make up the Clean Growth Hub as well. Funding was also made available through programs that offer grants and contributions, wage subsidies, loans, tax incentives. Now, as part of navigating through these grants and contributions programs, you may have come across some common terms and wondered what they meant. In addition to helping you understand if your project is a fit for various programs, the hub can also help you understand these terms as well. For example, most federal funding programs offer either a grant or a contribution. These two terms are similar, but not the same. Recipients of a grant are provided with funding upfront, whereas recipients of contributions are provided funding after meeting certain conditions outlined in the contribution agreement. Um, with grant programs, you may see that there is an additional level of processing as all of the due diligence in assessing applications are conducting upfront. In contrast, due diligence for contribution applications are a combination of upfront and on a schedule um, as outlined in the agreement. Contributions are also further divided into repayable and non-repayable contributions. The main difference between the two is that repayable contributions are considered to be similar to loans as they are, as the name suggests, to be paid, to be repaid back. And there are many, many more terms that I am sure you have come across. Um, and a whole day can be dedicated to just talking about just the, this aspect of public funding. I won't go into any more at this time, but I highly encourage you to reach out to the hub when you're ready to pursue funding and talk about the different aspects of public funding. And the hub was created to help streamline and coordinate access to the different variety of available funding programs out there um, and through, through the different mechanisms as well. Um, as mentioned, the hub itself does not 
offer funding. Um, we provide advice on how to navigate through the funding initiatives and determine which program would best fit your needs. Through the Hub, we can provide information and advice about programs and services that may be relevant to Indigenous clean tech clients, including um, Indigenous organizations. A few examples include the an Indigenous Entrepreneur lo uh, Loan, which is offered by our partner, uh, Business Development Bank of Canada, or BDC, which is um, this, which is a program that provides financing of up to $350,000 to grow or scale the entrepreneur's business. Uh, loans can be used to cover a range of eligible activities, including startup costs, acquiring assets, uh, financing uh, franchise fees, uh, support with ex uh, exporting and more. Um, another example is the Clean Fuels Fund. Uh, this program is offered by Natural Resources Canada, uh, one of the hub's co-chairs, and it offers funding for Indigenous-led clean fuel production and capacity projects. This program is open to organizations that are at least 50% Indigenous-owned and supports activities such as clean fuel production projects. It also supports feasibility and engineering studies to assess the new build or expansion of low-carbon fuel production facilities. There's also the Agriculture, uh, Agricultural Clean Technology Program, or uh, ACT, another example. Um, this program is offered by another hub uh, partner, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada, and is open to a range of applicants, including Indigenous groups. Uh, through this program, Indigenous applicants would be able to access a more favorable cost-sharing ratio of 60 to 40, compared to 50 to 50. It supports uh, R&D, uh, commercialization and adoption of clean tech in areas such as ag-based bioproducts and precision, precision agriculture, among other eligible areas. An additional example to highlight is the Indigenous Entrepreneur Startup Program offered by Futurepreneur. Uh, through Futurepreneur, which is funded in part by the federal government, uh, Indigenous entrepreneurs aged 18 to 39 can access support to launch or buy their own business. Uh, with up to $60,000 in financing, an expert uh, mentor um, will be assigned for up to two years and the entrepreneur uh, can have access to various other resources um, that is offered through the program. Um, and Futurepreneur basically helps young entrepreneurs to kickstart their business plans. Um, in addition to these examples, uh, the Hub can provide information on an array of other relevant clean tech programs, um, include, including those that ACT that um, offer more beneficial stacking and cost sharing ratios to Indigenous recipients. Now, these are just a few ways to connect with us um, on this slide here. The Hub has a newsletter uh, that's issued on a quarterly basis and includes timely information on various clean tech initiatives and events. Uh, again, um, as mentioned earlier, our next edition will be coming out at end of March. Um, and as mentioned, our website also provides a centralized source of information and is updated weekly. Um, you can always reach out to any of us as well uh, if you'd like to connect further. Um, I believe the email address um, for our corporate inbox is here or on the next page. So thank you very much. I hope this has provided you with an overview uh, of the Clean Growth Hub's services and information on a variety of um, federal funding programs that uh, you may look into and maybe some that we, we may help um, you look into as well. Um, so I hope this this presentation, um, you found this presentation helpful. Uh, thank you so much, Mary. Um, you know, the hub, I think I read 2018, so it's pretty new. It's pretty young, um, but you're growing. You're offering so much good resource and support. Um, there was one question in the chat box um, from Dolly. So are we allowed to stack these? <laughs> Dolly, do you want to? Yes. Yeah, I can. Thank you for the great presentation. I was just wondering that you, you mentioned a lot of um, funding available through through various 
um, sectors, um, agencies, and is there still that 75% stacking rule? Yes, for in general, there is a 75% stacking rule, but there are um, different programs out there um, where that um, does not um, apply. Uh, for example, there is a program called uh, Can Export Communities Investment, where Indigenous um, applicants um, can have a 100% stacking limit. So it really depends on the program. But again, in general, it's, it is 75%. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for the question, Dolly. Uh, so we're going to open it up. This is an excellent time. We got lots of time for any questions or comments. Um, come on in. All right. So Ken has a question. Uh, Ken, do you want to come on in, or do I can I can also easily read it as well? All right. So, yeah. There we go. Okay, you want me to read it? Okay, um, I was just wondering if you, um, uh, uh, let me read my own uh, comments because I was just uh, taking time to read it. Uh, do you assist in the ranking and classification of products, for example, for procurement, um, so one product versus another and uh, good, better, best, and how much, how, much, uh, how much better than good and how much better than, than, than uh, how much is best, better than, uh, so I think you get the gist of my, I want to procure some product or service, and I just want to know which one is better and by how much. So uh, um, I think I understand the question. If you're asking if we are part of the assessment process in um, in ranking, classifying, and and basically evaluating the different products for procurement costs, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So no, we are not um, part of that process. We are actually a very inclusive um, organization where we basically try not to um, put a limit on the type of organizations that can um, access our services. And, and when, I'm, when I mean um, restrictions, I'm talking about like the different um, types of products or uh, classifications of products. Um, as long as you're operating in the clean tech sector, we're going to provide help to you to assist you in, in uh, furthering your goals to, um, in, your, in your projects. Um, in the procurement, on the procurement side, we do work with Procurement Canada and um, they are a partner of the hub. Um, but we have no influence on how they decide um, on the procurement front. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yes, Ken always comes in with the good questions. Um, Dana, you're here. I just want to create an opportunity for you to offer any, any words, any knowledge that you have to bring. I mean, I'm not sure right at this moment, but I'm sure I can uh, answer maybe the next question. Um, so when ready to seek investors and in next business expansion. Oh, sorry, that wasn't even a question. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but Mary covered most of it. Um, um, I don't really have much to add, but just feel free to connect with us if you have any other questions um, about programs or how the hub works, um, we'll, be, we'll be there to answer any questions. Awesome, well, thank you. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I thought you're here, you got some good knowledge. And I was- That's okay. <laughs> um, it, so the, again, the floor is open. I'm wondering though, would you be able to give an example of a project that came through without naming names, of course, but just so we can have a, a bit of an, a more of an idea. Yeah, so I have an example. Um, it wasn't directly with an indigenous uh, community, but the company was working with um, a company in Northwest Territories, or sorry, was working with an indigenous community um, in Northwest Territories. And what their project was, was collecting 
um, wood that came downstream um, Hay River in Hay River. And what they wanted to do was work with the indigenous community that was in that surrounding area. Um, I believe they're, I can't remember the name of the indigenous community, but um, they were um, looking to be able to create jobs within the community for them to uh, either work on the processing plant. So taking that wood from downstream, drying it, um, and then turning it into wood pellets um, or biomass to be able to heat um, either residential buildings or commercial buildings within the community. So there's lots of ways that Indigenous groups can get involved with either businesses or with, on their own as well. So um, in that specific project, um, since there are a lot, since they'd be partnering with that Indigenous community, um, they that indigenous community can apply directly to um, for example the clean and remote um, energy program that is with uh, NRCAN so they they would be able to apply to that and get funding it, and that specific program offers funding for all stages of projects so with this specific project um, they were in the early stages so that would actually be a, be a beneficial opportunity for the indigenous community and the company to work together to kind of develop that strategy of um, collecting the wood turning it into these wood pellets and then um, in turn heating the community so it was, it's pretty interesting that's just one example we have multiple companies that come to us um, that was just the most recent one that came to my mind Thank, thank you. you. Yes. I love hearing those stories. Dolly? Yeah, no, no, thank you for that. So when a project like this comes across, I'm just trying to absorb everything here. Um, say like the wood coming down, hey, river, why not? Did that come to you in the idea stage? Hey, we've got this wood coming down. We're thinking of working with the communities. What was that process? Yeah, so the company, um, so like Mary said in our intake form, we ask all, all clients to fill out a form. This form basically collects all of the um, basic information that we would need in order to be able to su provide support um, to the client. So um, in that form, they mentioned that they were planning on working with um, Indigenous communities that were along Hay River, and I believe Slave River as well. It was two rivers that were um, that they were planning on working with or collecting the wood from. Um, and it was in the beginning stages. Um, so they were just in the in the stage of basically developing a strategy to work with the indigenous community as well as the city of Hay River. So um, once since it's in an early stage, we did let the company know that. Um, they can connect with us once they actually start uh, progressing in their project. So um, if they get to a certain stage where they are actually um, implement, like collecting the wood, then they need they would need financing for, um, or funding for purchasing the equipment to collect the wood or like the drying equipment. So they could come to us um, and we could provide that type of advice um, depending on where they're at in their project. I hope that answered your question. I'm not sure if it did. <laughs> no, no, that gave, gave it a, a, a better scope for myself. Mm -hmm. So really it depends. Um, it depends as, as long as your program or your project progresses, then we'd be able to offer that type of support, you know? So if they, um, if they come to us like six months down the line saying that they've uh, met these certain requirements or met these certain stages and they're ready to get to the next stage, then they can maybe qualify for different type of funding now that they've progressed um, in their project. So it all depends on where they're at in that TRL scale. So the technology readiness level scale. Um, so yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, there is, I, I read, I heard there was a toolkit. So that would be found on the websites. And that, that would help, um, you know, organizations or nations to kind of flesh out, flesh out their ideas. Exactly. Um, so we have multiple tools on our website. 
uh, one being the um, applying for um, federal uh, funding tool. Um, it's a pretty con concise tool um, and uh, might take a little bit of time to read through, but um, it brings up all the common um, ideas from all the uh, application guides that you may see into one location so that you, you can understand how to read those, those applicant guides. Uh, we also have, of course, the um, what uh, Dana mentioned and what uh, I mentioned earlier, the uh, technology readiness level tool uh, to help you kind of assess where your project or where your technology is at. Um, the, we also have a, um, a filtering funding uh, tool where um, organizations can go in and uh, type in keywords to what they're looking for um, as far as one, the objective, the type of uh, subsector that they're, they're operating in, and maybe trying to um, find um, preliminary ideas of which, um, which funding or support uh, program or opportunity that may be of interest to them. Great. So, Kristen from Hopeton. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, carbon credits, carbon offset, does the hub play any role in that? So, the um, authority on that would be EC -E um, or Environment Canada, who is a big um, partner at the hub as well. We actually have um, an embedded representative. Um, at the hub. And when it comes to questions about uh, carbon credits, um, what we would like to do is bring in our rep to help answer those questions. So if let's say a client um, comes in and submits um, a, uh, a service request intake form, if they identify um, concerns or issues or um, things they want to know related to that or related to anything that's regulatory in general, we will bring in the person who has the expertise in, in that field. Great, and, and I can imagine with 17 sectors kind of holding this, there's gotta be a lot of expertise, you know, in and resource. I, I just love that, that's great. All right, so any more questions before we carry on with the rest of our day? Um, so just to make mention, in case you didn't see it in the chat box, um, that this, the PowerPoint or the presentation will be emailed to all of you. So you'll have access. There were so many links in there. So you'll have that as a good resource to look at. And then also there is a, an email address. And, and if you have any questions, um, can you put the email or is that that's probably in the presentation, right? I think I think I saw that. Um, that is a good resource as well for you if you have any questions and then they will connect you with the right people um, who could help you out and assist you. So, you know, I do not be shy. Ask those questions, start that conversation, make those connections. That's so important. And this is a good resource, a great resource. So thank you so much for sharing and spending your time with us here to share about what, what this is all about. So really good. It's great to hear we're moving in a good direction. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us and here Ken saying thank you for making us aware of your services. And I agree, I concur. Um, so good things happening out there. So thank you all for joining. Uh, oh, so Bonnie, just one question. Uh, okay, so Bonnie, I will connect with Elsie on that, your question. Um, and I'm just going to copy and paste your email right here. So thank you, everybody. There will be an evaluation link that's sent for, it's going to be sent to you about today's presentation. We always value your voice, your feedback. So please let us know, give your feedback, lend us, lend your voice, lend your thoughts. We can always, there's always room to improve. So fill that out. And I believe when you fill it out, your name will be entered to win a draw. And we do a draw at the end of the month. And it's a pretty good prize. It's a visa a gift card. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I cannot remember because, you know, last month was a long time ago, but I think it's a $200 visa gift card. So it's a pretty generous prize. So it's, yeah, 
It's in your best interest to fill out that evaluation link. All right. So thank you for joining us. Have a good rest of the day and know that you never walk alone in creator's world. You're surrounded by the waters, the animals, the plants, our ancestors, you know, and all of our relatives. So be well and we'll see you again. Peace, everyone. Nish, nish. <laughs>